Welcome everybody to video six of Being Innovator with Flo, our very final video in this series. We have been going step by step to build an automated business process from start to finish. So you can watch all of these videos one after the other, share your progress online, and then get a chance to win some fun prizes. All right, so in video five, we looked at how to distribute and customize our flows so that it can be accessible for our users. For video six, our last video, we're going to add the screen to our actual record page, and then we're gonna talk some best practices for rollout. All right, I'm super excited to hear from our admin evangelists, Leanne Reimel and Mark Baseman, about how to activate and implement our flow. Let's hear from them. Thanks, Rebecca, and welcome back to the last video of our Be an Innovator with Flow series. So last time we talked about all the places you can use Flow, how you make decisions about how you're going to deploy your Flow, if it's going to be an action or a component, and we made our screens look a little bit prettier and sure a little did. bit more user friendly. Some of it with Mark's great input on emoji and how we can use emoji in Salesforce. So. Now that we've made our flow screens really optimized and we know where to put it, let's go ahead and activate our flow. Let's turn them on. And deploy it to our users. So now we're ready to deploy to our users. So let's make sure that we've activated our flow so it's available to add to the page. So when we open up flows and setup, we can see our information about our flow. And if we have been you know, working on our flow for a while, this is where you'd see all the versions of your flow. Um, we have the one version here, and we're going to go ahead and activate that. So when we activate it, it makes it available to be added to pages. And if it was an auto launch flow, when you activate it, that makes it available to be added to, say, a process builder action. So activation is really important. Um, so we want to make sure that we've activated our flow. So since we've done that, we can go ahead and open up our project page. And on our project page, we've got our, you know, this is one of our test records, one of our project records here. And this is where we would go into the edit page, which takes us to the app builder and start deciding, you know, where exactly we're going to put this flow on the page and add it with the flow standard component. So on the left, we've got all of our standard components for app builder. And if we scroll down, we've got our flow component. And we're going to drag that just to the top right here. Awesome. Now we can see that our only flow that's actually available in this environment is our collect project feedback from users. But if you had multiple screen flows that were activated, this is where those would be available. So again, when you think about um, rolling out and implementing, there's a few ways to kind of troubleshoot, like why can't I add a flow to a page or to a utility bar, or maybe why can't my users see it? So of course, activation, that it has a screen, um, that your users have access to flow, that they have access to the page that you're trying to surface it to them on. So there's a whole kind of troubleshooting funnel you can go through to make sure everyone has access. So we've got it available here. We can select our look and feel. So if we were adding this flow maybe to the center of the page, or maybe it was on an app page, we might want to select two column. Uh, we want to maximize our real estate here, so we're going to keep this one column. Now here's where we see, again, that variable. So because we made that variable available for input, it makes it available here to pass the record ID into the variable. So this is going to say we want to have that current project ID be automatically populated with whatever project we're on when we, when we do this flow, when we do this kind of input form. And so if you don't see this uh, current project ID or you don't see that input variable, go back to your flow, go into the toolboxes and manager, and make sure that that variable has checked available for input. Awesome, so I've added that. I've said, yes, this should be creating new feedback records for the project that we're on with checking that box. And now I can go ahead and activate this page for my users. So when I go back, I can see what that end user experience looks like. I can even maybe do some testing because we're in our sandbox, like add some details, add our rating, maybe check the requires escalation box. Great, so then when I look at the related records, I can see, awesome, my new project feedback was just created. So that's how you can deploy your flow to your users and you know, roll it out to them on whatever page you've been building your flow for. Awesome. So you've built your flow, you've optimized it, you've thought about where it goes on the page or anywhere in your org, and you've got it all 
tricked out. So now your users are going to want to use it. Yeah, so we're so excited. We love seeing the flows that you are building and optimizing your screens and sharing them with us. We're excited to see the flow that you share here. Um, but we also had a couple more requirements, right? We had a couple more things that we identified in the first couple of videos that our users wanted. So once we've built our flow and deployed it, that's when we can start building out our analytics and thinking about those charts, those reports. How do we surface all of that really valuable data we're collecting to our users? So it's a great way to see the kind of outcome of deploying a flow like this. And also it gives you that additional visibility that maybe putting a report chart on the project page. That might be our next step here. Because Mark, we're never really done, right? When we're working on a project like this. That's right. So going back to when we originally gathered those requirements, now that you've built your solution, the first thing that you need to do is put it in front of your users. So you wanna test this with your users and see, does this actually meet their needs? So it's super important to get someone in front of this as soon as possible so that you can then refine, tweak, and what's great is because you have the power of clicks with the new flow builder, you can adjust. Maybe the radio buttons isn't the ideal uh, gathering mechanism. Maybe you want a different kind of field, a drop down, a pick list. So this is your opportunity to optimize and maintain. Yeah, like as you go on, it's a lot easier to maintain than a code base, frankly, because like we saw when we did the pick list choice set, as you're making changes in your Salesforce environment, for example, like those values are gonna be reflected in your flow. And you can continue to go back and like add more steps, maybe add different screens or any flows that you're building. That can be a process of kind of continuous improvement and building as you gather feedback from your users. Because we're not done building flows, right, Mark? Like yeah, we want to see right. more flows that you build. There's a ton of great flows out there that you can build for user screen flows. You can build flows that you're putting onto your utility bar, on your homepage, on mobile apps. Maybe something will be launched from a process builder process. Exactly, we know there's a lot of you process builder experts out there. It's a great chance to think about how can you build those auto launch flows for you know data management options or things that you want to trigger processes for that maybe in the past you would have used an Apex trigger for, right? Now right. we can do that with clicks with Flow. So we're super excited to see all of the amazing flows that you're gonna be building. We love seeing the flows you've added to your page and we can't wait to see the final product. Um, and I think with that, we're ready to wrap up our Be an Innovator with Flow series. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Leanne. We were so lucky to have Rebecca and Shannon Hale as part of this and we loved, again, seeing all of your feedback on Twitter. We can't wait to see the final product and thanks for joining. Back to you, Rebecca. Bye. Wow, thank you, Leanne and Mark, for bringing us home and sharing some of those best practices for implementing our flow. All right, so my key takeaways are, one, that we can add our screen flows to our page using the standard flow component in the Lightning App Builder. So powerful. And secondly, as we're building, we need to make sure that our variable is available for input so that the variable value can be populated by the record page. Hugely important in our use case. And lastly, we wanna revisit our original requirements to make sure that we're solving for our users' needs. We wanna test our flow with some of our users, take their feedback, and then make any final tweaks needed before we roll it out. All right, so now it's your turn. Share a screenshot of your final flow screen on the record page, and then share it on Twitter using hashtag beaninnovator to win. All entries for video six must be completed and tweeted with hashtag beaninnovator by midnight, 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on May 3rd. Restrictions do apply, so see rules for details. And also see the resources in our trail mix to round out your learning. This is our last video in the Be an Innovator with Flow adventure. So thank you for joining us um, to build out this automated business process from start to finish. I hope you enjoyed it and started to think about how you can use flows to improve how your business runs. Uh, we do ask that you please provide feedback so we can improve these learning adventures and continue to produce them. Find the survey in the trail mix. With that, I'm going to join Leanne and Mark and have some sunshine chocolates. Awesome